Let's bring in Tim Leeper. Thanks for sitting through all that, Coach. How you doing, Timbo? No, no, I'm good. You got to clear that up. You're the one that broke it. I'm, I'm right with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Listen, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the Blue Jays analysis, we just started talking a little Jays yesterday, warming the viewers up that you were coming on, and the comments just went insane. Western Canada loves the Toronto Blue Jays. When did you realize that that is a major fact? Well, I had heard, my first year in the big leagues was 2014. You always hear how great the Seattle trip is. And then you experience the Seattle trip, and it is unbelievable. I'm obviously, I knew from roving around and ro- roving around Vancouver uh, in my first year here, which I was in the minor leagues, I knew there was a, a good Jays following. But when I took that first trip to Seattle, like, that's a whole different beast. I mean, it's almost, again, it's a home game. And the fact that there's 20,000 people in the stands for you at batting practice, and you're running off the field, and it has a playoff-type atmosphere, it was unbelievable. Yeah, there you go. So from Toronto to Seattle and literally everywhere in between, they love the Toronto Blue Jays. And so you saw Bo Bichette, I would think. Uh, was What day was it? Sunday he met with the media via Zoom, and he, he expects a World Series for the Blue Jays. I love the confidence. Uh, what are your thoughts on the outlook of the Jays? I think it's good. I think it's a work in progress. I think they know that. I mean, I think if you ask what the expectations are of of front office guys and players, I think they're completely different, which it should be. And and even coaches for that matter. I mean, you, you want to believe you're the best. And to be honest with you, you know, if you don't think that way, you're, you're, you're not in the right headspace anyway. So these guys believe that they were a playoff team last year. They were, um, and they've gotten a lot better, which makes it, the, the jump very easy for them. And you want guys thinking this. You want them to do that. You, obviously, you have adults at the, in the front of the room that try to maybe temper those. But at the same time, they have to believe, too. Because, you know, it's funny. You always think you're good or you maybe think you're bad. But you sit sometime in June, and that is what you are. And you need to be prepared for both. And and uh, sometimes I the one takeaway I have from five years in the big leagues here is that I, I saw teams give up on themselves way too early when they were really good or way before they had like a like a maybe a five ten game winning streak it really changes your place in the standings and so i just think again if you're not thinking you're the best team if you're not thinking you're going to get to the world series then and you're not prepared for that then then you're not in the right place going to ask our viewers if you have questions for longtime Jays first base coach Tim Leeper fire him at us and you know producer Clark's going to have a million i'm just going to say this and then i'll turn it over to everybody else it just i was stunned when I heard Bo Bichette had only played 75 games in the bigs, because it seems like we've heard his name for a long time, seems like he's been around for a long time, and what's exciting to me is with him, Biggio, and Vladdy, it's here. People gave him a pass, I guess, and the playoffs are being swept by the Rays. I don't know why, you know, but it's the time is now, and that's exciting for this Blue Jays team, unless I've misread it. Is the time not now for this group? It's definitely now, and they know it's now, too. Like, I've said this in a couple of things I did like, okay, the puppies are mature now. Like the cuteness kind of has to wear off. Like the stakes are a lot higher now. And again, they know that they believe that they were, they were there. They were in the playoffs last year and any you know, two game playoff, like anything can happen. Right. So that that's, that's neither here nor there, but it's time to answer the questions. Is Vladimir Guerrero a really good player? Going to put up a high OPS going to play be a really good defensive first baseman. Can Bo play shortstop? Can he continue to do his things in the in the in the, on the offensive side that he's always done? Is Cavan for real? Is he going to be able to adjust to third base? I know he's going to play a lot of other places. Like so, those questions have to get tightened up. The great thing is, I know the players think that, and I know the players know that. Like the things that Bo said about him playing shortstop, the fact that he was disappointed in the way the season went. Even though if you look at it, he kind of had a lot of success, but at the same time, he understands the questions. He gets it, and. The, their stakes are higher, and it is time like for the newness to wear off. It's time for the potential label to kind of be shed, and it's time for those guys to go out and perform, and, and they're well aware of that. Now, now you add two guys into the clubhouse, and Simeon and and Springer, and guys that have actually been in the playoffs every single year, that just naturally is going to like filter over and make them a little bit better and raise the bar even more. That is exciting stuff. So DG in Saskatoon writes in and he says, Morning, boys. Would love to hear Tim's thoughts on two young Canadian baseball players, St. Louis Cardinals outfielder and gold glove winner Tyler O'Neill and Blue Jays prospect Otto Lopez. Does Tim think Otto can crack the Jays lineup? I don't know if he's going to have an opportunity to this year just because of his age and the fact that he hasn't played enough. He went down with us and played on, on the 
I think it was a Pan Am game qualifier when we went to Brazil. I, I believe I, I'm, I'm getting the years mixed up because COVID's got me completely blacked out. <laughs> so it was it was like in the last year or last two years. And he's a really good player. He's got a lot of versatility. He has the ability to put the bat on the ball, get the barrel to it, and find the holes. And like, which is to me in the game and the way the game's going, like that offense totally plays. You know, getting better defensively, getting more experience, having a year of minor league baseball under his belt, which hopefully happens this year. He's going to be really good. And Tyler O'Neill, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a good friend with the Cardinals manager. I know he loves him. Obviously, he won a gold glove. He's great. The only time I've really been around him was a little bit just watching the Pan Am games here in Toronto in, in 15. And then he played on our uh, WBC team that that was we weren't very good last time. And uh, real happy for him. Good guy, energetic guy, like loves to play. And like there's a lot of great things about him. The Canadian baseball is really strong, and it's only getting stronger, too. There are a lot of questions coming in about prospects, but I, I need to ask you this, Coach. Uh, we're going to get Blue Jays inundated all spring long here until they actually hit the field. Tell me about the other teams in the American League East. The Jays finished third. Our viewers voted last year. They predicted they'd finish third, and they did. And they voted for third place again. Just yesterday, we had that poll. Who is their biggest challengers in the American League East? I think the Yankees, obviously, are, are at the top. I mean, they... It was a slow offseason for them, but like you can see, they've kind of rallied a lot. I mean, they, they took a couple good chances uh, with another Canadian, uh, Jameson Tallion, who pitched for us in the WBC. Um, he's a Texas Canadian, but he's but he's, he's, he is Canadian. He picked, pitched for us in the WBC in 2000, I think, 11 or 13. I don't know. Again, the years are getting <laughs> messed, mixed up. But that's a really good that's a really good addition. They got a good starting set. They got a really good bullpen. They kind of quietly... Went out and got Darren O'Day to go along with like Zach Britton and and Chad Green. I mean, they're really good. They got a deep lineup. Health's going to be a big issue for them. You know, you need Stanton, you need Judge to stay healthy because that changes the outlook of that team a little bit. But going in, you got to look at they're pretty good. And look at the Rays won the East and the Rays went to the World Series. So they did lose their top two pitchers, which were really really good pitchers, and that's going to be tough to kind of. Uh, I'm going to turn my phone off here, but yep. that's going to be tough to kind of you know to kind of plug that hole, but they have depth and, and they have a formula that's kind of worked for them. I would put the Jays ahead of the Rays, um, but, but a lot of things got to happen, you know, for them to get there too. And like, these teams aren't done yet. I mean, ideally you want your team to be in first place from day one and go the whole season and have no adversity and go. But the reality is it never happens that way. And I think when you look at the Jays and you look at the fact they're really short in like dependable starters, I think a little bit's by design because, you know, as the season goes on and you start looking at teams that are dropping out of the races and they're going to sell people and going to be guys are going to be available for trade. And in case you haven't looked, like half of baseball is not even really trying <laughs> this year. So there's going to be a lot of teams to choose from. And that gives you a chance to get a guy that doesn't only help you for this season, but is able to help you for maybe the season after and the season after that. So I think that's kind of where they're looking. I think in a way it's kind of smart because with the guys that are left, I don't know if there's a real bona fide answer out there. I don't think you wanted to get uh, Tawan Walker for three years. I, I think they're hoping for a guy on a one-year deal if they're going to go out and spend money that way. So it might not be perfect right now, but they know where they're weak and, and they know where they have to go. And I think there's going to be some people available during the summer, you know, sometime in June, July, where, where that guys are going to be available and they're going to make their team even better. Well, that was my actual question for you. I mean, free before you showed up with the Blue Jays in 2014, you're familiar with the franchise history. We were crappy for 20 years. Could never get past the Red Sox and the Yankees ever. And now you say you throw the Rays in there. You didn't even mention the Red Sox. But the Blue Jays still have a chance, and we're talking about Biggio, Vladdy, Bichette, now Springer, but none of them are pitchers. What are they missing? What's the chink in their armor, Tim, entering the season? Starting pitching, starting pitching. I mean, I, they know that. Everybody knows that. I mean, you you got Ryu, who's your stabilizer, but also Ryu's a six inning guy. And and the way it ended last year, and he didn't really bounce back. That that and, and there's concerns with him. So that that's that's he's great. I mean, he's unbelievable. Been unbelievable the last the three four years. Um, but at the same time, you got to be cautious of that your number two guy's Pearson, who hasn't really thrown. He's thrown maybe a hundred, just close to a hundred innings in pro ball, and he, and he didn't throw you know what ten last year. So that's a big deal. And then you got Robbie Ray, Tanner Roark, Ross Stripp, and mm -hmm. Stephen Matz. They have depth. They have guys that can cover uh, innings and, and and start. But you just kind of hope one of those guys kind of takes off or, or or just a combination of guys kind of takes off. So they've created some depth. They need starting pitching. Again, I think they're going to be on the constant lookout for it. It's going to be, 
it's so important to have a guy that can spin seven, maybe eight, just one time through the rotation. Just, just the, this, the, even the thought of that is like a really good. And when you leave yourself short on starting pitching, they built a really good and deep bullpen. But at the same time, you don't want to overuse these guys. I mean, they kind of got in that situation last year and they really pieced it together well. But I'm not sure if you remember, they were really running on fumes with playing so many close games early that uh, they had that COVID uh, break when Philadelphia guys uh, tested positive and they got like three or four days off and it gave them a chance to reset and kind of get themselves right at the, at the, at the right time. So you just don't want to wear the pin guys down because uh, it's a really good pan, and a lot of those guys are coming off injuries too. So you don't want to throw a heavy workload on him. You just need starters to cover some innings and just like to get those guys spaced out and get them work on a regular basis because you need all your players to be good in September going into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Outstanding. Plus you have to get there. <laughs> well, yeah, no kidding. Uh, outstanding <laughs> preview. Uh, Tim, thank you for this. Enjoy the ball, and we'll catch up here once we get rolling. Sounds great. Always good talking to you. Thank you, buddy. Long time Blue Jays first base coach Tim Leeper joining us on video chat. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.